Hello and welcome everyone to Synapser. So far in our hematology portion, we have completed our discussion on the formation of blood components. Now in today's lecture, we'll discuss about an important topic that's the heme synthesis. Now this heme synthesis is very important because with each step of its formation, we'll have a disease link to it. So what we'll do is, we'll first discuss about these steps, then we'll discuss about the disease link to each step of its formation. First of all, what we have is, we have a molecule of succinyl coenzyme A. Now you should know that this succinyl coenzyme A is the product of Krebs cycle and the Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondria. Therefore, the first step will obviously take place in the mitochondria. So this step takes place in the mitochondria. What we have during this step is a molecule of succinyl coenzyme A combining with the molecule of glycine and getting converted into the delta amino levolenic acid in the presence of an enzyme known as ALA synthase. And during this step, we'll have the removal of a molecule of carbon dioxide, a molecule of uh, coenzyme A, and a molecule uh, or a sulfohydryl molecule. So these three will be released during its formation. Now this delta amino levonic acid will be transferred to the cytoplasm. Why? Because for its conversion into the porphobilinogen, we require an important enzyme that is delta ALA dehydratase. And this enzyme is present within the cytoplasm. Therefore, obviously this step will take place within the cytoplasm. And during this step, what happens is two molecules of delta amino levolenic acid combine and get converted into the porphobilinogen. And as the name is, the name of the enzyme is dehydratase, therefore obviously we will have the removal of a water molecule. Now how many water molecules will be released is obviously two because two molecules of amino levolenic acid are getting fused. So we will have the removal of two molecules of water. Now this porphobilinogen is actually a single pyrrole like this. And this porphobilinogen will get converted into a tetrapyrrole that is hydroxymethylbilene. It's actually tetra tetrapyrrole and its structure is like this. So here I have a tetrapyrrole which is formed from the combination of four molecules of porphobilinogen. So four molecules of porphobilinogen fuse and form a single tetrapyrrole ring or a linear structure that is the hydroxymethylbilene and this process takes place in the presence of an enzyme known as porphobilinogen deaminase and as the name of the enzyme is deaminase therefore we'll have the removal of amine groups now how many amine groups will be released obviously four molecules of fusing therefore we'll have the removal of four molecules of amine now after this we'll have an important process that is cyclization So during cyclization, this linear tetrapyrrole will get converted into a circular structure or a ring structure. And this will take place in the presence of an enzyme that is uroporphobilinogen co-synthase. So we we'll have the formation of uroporphobilinogen uh, third. Now this uroporphobilinogen third will get converted into coproporphobilinogen third in the presence of an enzyme that is uroporphobilinogen decarboxylase. Now as the name is decarboxylase, therefore we will have the removal of carbon dioxide. Now how many carbon dioxide molecules will be released? We have a release of four CO2 molecules. Why? Because it is a circular or a ring shaped tetrapyrrol. Therefore we will have the removal of four carbon dioxide molecules. Now after this step, this coproporphyrinogen uh, will get converted into protoporphyrinogen 9. Now this, enzyme, uh, this process requires an enzyme that is coproporphyrinogen oxidase. Now you should know that oxidases are present within mitochondria only. Therefore obviously this step will also take place in the mitochondria. So what we have in the heme synthesis is the first step takes place in the mitochondria. Then we have the cytoplasmic process, uh, these processes and then finally we will also have the mitochondrial steps again. So this step also takes place within the mitochondria. Then this protoporphyrinogen 9 will simultaneously get converted into porphyrin and this will take place in the presence of an enzyme that is uroporphyrinogen oxidase. And during this process, now after this process that is the formation of porphyrin will have the formation of heme. Now this formation of heme requires an important process that is chelation and the chelation takes place in the presence of iron. So what will happen is this porphyrin in the, uh, will take iron in the ferrous form, uh, the iron will take the central position within the heme. So we have the iron taking the central position and this porphyrin or the tetrapyrrol will surround the iron and we will have the formation of heme. And this process will take place in the presence of an enzyme known as ferrochelatase. 
and we have the formation of heme. Now this heme will combine with the globin molecule. Now this globin is formed as like other proteins. So we'll have the combination of heme with the globin and we'll have the finally the formation of hemoglobin. So that's overall the process of uh, hemoglobin and during this you will have to require, you will have to know that uh, which process is dehydration, which process is amination or deamination sorry and which, uh, during which process cyclization takes place. So you will have to remember that. But more than this, the most important thing is the disease link to each step. So now what we'll do is we'll discuss about the diseases linked to each step of its formation. Now for the first step we require an enzyme that is ALA synthase. And this ALA synthase has a cofactor, namely vitamin B6. And there's an important link to pharmacology. Now, what is that link? The drugs using to, which are used to treat Parkinson's disease, they decrease the amount of vitamin B6 within the body. So what will happen? As the amount of vitamin B6 will decrease, therefore, ALA synthase will not get its cofactor. Therefore, it will not convert, uh, it will not form the delta amino levolinic acid. Therefore, the heme synthesis will be altered during the decreased amount of vitamin B6. And also, if we have the decreased amount of ALA synthase enzyme, we'll have the X-linked sideroblastic anemia. Now, why sideroblastic anemia? See, if we have the decreased amount of this enzyme, what will happen is the ferrous uh, form of iron will get accumulated within the iron, within the RBC. Why? Because the porphyrin is not formed. As the ALA synthase is not present therefore we will not have the formation of heme sorry porphyrin and as the porphyrin is not present the heme in its ferrous form will get accumulated within the RBC therefore it will get converted into the sideroblast and we will have the formation of sideroblastic anemia and this is known as X-linked sideroblastic anemia. Now this first step only is the highly regulated step and it is it has a product inhibition that is heme will inhibit the first step. So the heme will inhibit the first step, therefore the first step is the highly regulated step of this formation. Now the second step is, if there is decreased amount of delta ALA dehydratase, we will again have a sideroblastic anemia, but this happens due to lead poisoning. Okay, so this step also takes place with due to lead poisoning and there is an important thing that is before 19, sorry, before 1978, the American painting companies were using lead in their paints. So before 1978, lead, were using in, uh, lead was being used in paints. So what uh, if a question asks you that uh, an old house or uh, they will directly tell you that a house built before 1978, you should think of this uh, decreased amount of ALA dehydratase. Okay, so it happens due to lead poisoning. And uh, in America, companies were using lead in their paints before 1978. After 1978, it was banned. Now, if we have the decreased amounts of uh, this enzyme, that is porphobilinogen deaminase, we'll have the acute intermittent porphyria. Now, what is this? This is an acute disorder in which we'll have the neuropsychiatric symptoms like dementia. Now, if we have the decreased amounts of uh, uroporphyrinogen co-synthase, we'll have the congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Now this disease is very important because it is the only porphyria that is recessive. All others are dominant. So what I said is all porphyrias are dominant except congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Now after this, if we have the decreased amounts of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, we will have the disease known as porphyria cutanea tarda. Now this is the most common, most common porphyria and also it has the cutaneous uh, or the uh, cutaneous manifestations like the photosensitivity. Now after that, if we have the decreased amounts of coproporphyrinogen oxidase, we will have the disease known as hereditary coproporphyria. And if we have the decreased amounts of uroporphyrinogen oxidase, we will have the disease known as ferrugate porphyria and if we have the decreased amounts of ferrochilitase, we will have the uh, presence of a disease known as protoporphyria. So these are the different types of porphyria and also the sideroblastic anemia which is caused due to the deficiency of ALA synthase. So that's everything you need to know about the heme synthesis and different diseases linked to its formation. 
Now what we'll do is, in the next topic, we'll discuss about the degradation of uh, hemoglobin within the RBC and then we'll discuss about the diseases like jaundice which is lead to the degradation of, uh, improper degradation of the hemoglobin. So that's everything for today's lecture. If you like my work, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you everyone and have a nice day.